Can I have a show of hands? How many of you do not have a computer science background before you got your first job as a developer? How many of you, of you were self-taught? How many of you struggle when you first learn programming? <laughs> I guess that's for everyone. <laughs> I'm Jason from Thinkerbox. Today, my talk will be a little different. I promise there's not a single line of code in my, in my speech. I'm going to share with you my story, how I've gone from a banker to a teacher and now a developer. So just to share a little bit um, of myself with you. Now I want to try this. In my story, as, as I go through it, perhaps some of you might come across something which, which you've experienced before, which you've done before. So if you have, can you just nod your head and say I? Can we try that? If s something happens that is familiar, you nod your head. Say I. Something like that. Okay? My talk is titled Midlife Please because I am twice the age of some of you here. And uh, Bliss, I'll share with that uh, in the talk. So my life before I was a banker, unfortunately I cannot find any photos of what I've done in this, in this part of my life. So uh, I'm just going to share with you what I've done before I became a developer, which is a teacher. This is how I looked, not much different still without hair, uh, but mostly in a suit, in some kind of shirt, in some kind of tie. Uh, I went to this school, and this was what I studied. So apparently, you know, when you, when you go to this school, you need to stand very straight, you need to have your tie, you know, you speak like a banker, basically. I quit my job, uh, that was a long time ago, that was in 2004 as a banker. I wanted to work on a startup. So I did that, but it wasn't successful. It was in education, so I decided to remain in the education sector and became a teacher. I'm going to share with you what I did as a teacher. So this is uh, just one of the schools I taught in, uh, in Singapore. Uh, do crazy things like this. Uh, this is a free dress day. So the kids dress up, and I dress up as a love guru, and anyone with love problems can come talk to me, you know? Or teenagers, right? This is when they look serious because it's in a test, right? This is a high school, I teach in high school. I taught economics and business and math. So sometimes when I do quizzes, you know, most of them are, you know, raise up their hands. Some of them try to look serious, try to be attentive, but you have one or two which is, you know, a bit disinterested. Sometimes it get, gets a bit intense, uh, but you always have a few jokers. And this is like the end of the year where I, you know, we wind down, relax, and usually revolve around food and watch movies. And whenever it's class photo taking time, they always get very excited and do crazy things like this. Um, you know, these are grade nine, by the way. Grade nine, you're talking about 14 years old, right? Uh, sometimes, sometimes they express their, their love for me by drawing things like that and say they love business, this is what I teach. And you see them at work. And apparently bald people have this magical power you know, from their hair. And apparently they try to get some powers from me. Um, and this is grade 12, uh, so the older ones, 17, 18 years old. They look serious, you think they'll be matured, but uh, actually no, they are still just like a kid and they still want to get that power from me. <laughs> uh, I, I love this. I love this. For some reason, one of the students suggested that uh, I'm their economics guru, so I'm like, we should meditate on it, on the book in front of us. So that was my life. I give appreciation for like the class rep and things like that. I'm the teacher for a magic club, so I teach them magic for a year, and then I want them to go out, just like developers, push your code out, right? go practice their magic uh, to the other students, things like that. And at the end of the year, we sometimes go paintballing, things like that, have some fun. 
And at school, uh, sometimes some people come. And this are uh, anybody recognize this? Harlem Globetrotters, the, the basketball players. So I'm I'm fascinated with them when I was a kid, but seeing them live is really something. Graduation is always a great affair. As you can see, we have 18 nationalities in my school. Um, and it's a grand affair. I taught both of them, this, the, the elder sister and the younger brother. And everyone is happy. And Silicon Valley. So one day, I decided, why am I still teaching? You know, I forgot what I've done before in 2004 when I wanted to do a startup. You know, I, I actually did, but it was successful. So I thought that I'm straying too much away from my goal. And I thought, hmm, if nine-year-olds can code, why can't I? So I decided to take a course in programming in, in San Francisco. And that's, that's what I did. I went. And to survive in San Francisco, which is very expensive, you have to bunk with, like, 10, 20, sometimes 50 people. I just want to show you this. This is one of the startups which is up and coming. They've got, I think, 10, 15 million dollars in funding. Anybody heard of this? No? Spoon Rocket? You order a uh, meal, it will come to you in about two minutes. It's really that good. All right? It's pretty good. Salesforce, the whole, and yeah, things are very expensive in San Francisco. And being in San Francisco now, which is the heart of Silicon Valley, uh, I've got a chance to visit a lot of uh, companies. GitHub is one of them. And they style their office like the Oval Office. It's like really cool. And the mascot, of course. I'm sure you use GitHub every day, right? Pushes to GitHub, yeah? I was there because Chris Wanstroth, the founder, the, one of the co-founders and CEO of GitHub, uh, was there to, to talk in San Francisco. There are tons of talks every day, tons of pitches. So anyone can come up with an idea or pitch or a product. Uh, Chinatown, tram, and apparently this is a must-go in Dai. City Lights as well, one of the well-known uh, Union Square, the bridge, the Gate Bridge get married, so on and so forth, yes. And you have um, movies, free movies uh, in the park, which is cool. And notice this is the same guy with Chris Wanstra. So what I did was, he was giving his uh, talk. At the end of it, I just walk up to him. He doesn't know me. I'm like a foreigner. I walk up to him and say, hey, Chris, that was a great talk. I'm a student with, uh, at, at, at this school. Would you like to come in and give this talk to, to our classmates. So I didn't expect him to, to accept, but he did. He said, oh, just send me an email. I sent him after two weeks, no reply. But on the, on the 14th day, he, he replied and said, cool, when do you want to do it? And that's the kind of things that startups, uh, or at least the co-founders, uh, you know, that they're very open to talk to anyone. And as long as you're nice to them, they'll be nice to you. And we visited a lot of other startups and neighborhoods. Uh, I like this, Tax the Rich. That's almost half of San Francisco. Who uh, are tech people now. And some uh, stores. And this was my project, which I wanted to do uh, in my uh, graduation project for my dad, who is a painter, who is an artist, to show off his art. This was the launch of iPhone 6. I thought there would be a lot of people, but no. Nobody at the <laughs> store for some reason. By right, the Loris Park. Who, who's been to San Francisco, by the way? I, I hope all these images are familiar to you. I hope somehow. Uh, okay, who knows the, where this is? Like some place? Anybody? Uh, in Mountain View? One of a very, very interesting startup. A Khan Academy, anyone? A Khan Academy? Um, Again, uh, there was a reason. Uh, I went there because of someone. I went to meet someone, and he's a very important person. Uh, let me see. Oh, what's his name now? Um, God, what's his name? Um, 
pues ven. At this point, we raise our hand and go, yeah? All right. <laughs> who, knows, who knows the first employee of Google? Employee. Sorry? Employee. The first employee. Okay. I'm, I'm on video. I'm really sorry. I forgot his name right now. Um, ah. Just Google, can someone Google? I, I need to know that name. Anyone? No, no, no. Um, anyway, I sent him an email and say, hey, uh, can I talk to you? I'm in, I'm in a valley. I'm like a student here. Like Craig Silverstein. Craig Silverstein. Anyone? Okay, basically, he was the architect for Google. He was the one who built the cockboard server. Later you'll see. So I had a walk around the block with him. He shared a lot of his insights of how Silicon Valley is, the boom and bust, and how to build a, a good startup, a lasting startup. And I guess this is maybe the mecca for some of you. Yes? Y Combinator? Uh, History Museum, Microsoft, yes. They are in the valley. Google, of course. Self-driving cars. History, and that was the the server. Anybody know Ming? Singaporean. One of the first, first uh, <coughs> early employees of Google. So uh, he's kind of like institutional because he, everyone who goes to Google wants to take a photograph of him, not the other way around. <laughs> right? So, uh, so Yahoo, uh, Cisco, PayPal. So I had a chance uh, during weekends to, to visit these places. Huawei, Nvidia, and of course, Apple, number one, if you need it. And this is uh, uh, Steve Jobs High School, Homestead High. So it's, it's sort of like, yeah, visiting. And his home, his parents' home, is the house where he lived before he passed away. And the birthplace of Silicon Valley, this is the garage where HP started. Hewlett and Packard. I hope some of you, most people know Hewlett Packard, no? Okay. And guess where this is? It's not Sun, but Facebook. <laughs> it's very, very interesting because Facebook bought over the premise from uh, Sun and who went bankrupt, right? Got into it. And of course, they have good parties. I've never been to so many parties with so many people. People the labs, yes, yes, institutional, and they have fleet week and so on and so forth. Lots of lots of conferences and so on. So okay. So I got back and just like many of you, I started to uh, attend meetups. And what's the biggest meetup in Singapore? So the Ruby meetup, right? <laughs> right? So I, I really have the uh, uh, fortune to meet with a number of uh, people, uh, Winston, Gerald, and some of you here, my classmate, so on and so forth. Uh, and I joined this dingy company with tons of construction every day <laughs> and with its floor slanted and I throw up the first week I was there every day uh, and it looks like this. So over these few months, I've been with them for a few months. Uh, I, I happened to go around with Gerald giving talks to people. This is at NUS, teaching young people how to code, older people how to code. And this is at INSEAD. And I had the opportunity to visit like SUTD for their open house and do things like that as a developer. So developers also have lives, right? <laughs> Not just code, right? So things like that, you know. And uh, the company is nice enough to uh, take us to Redang, Pulau Redang. So it was, it was a nice break for all of us. Uh, yeah, snorkeling, look at the clear water. I highly recommend it as a, as a, as a break. I've, we've even visited Taiwan uh, to visit a partner uh, who is Alpha Camp. They run schools like uh, teaching rails and mobile development. 
So uh, Gerald sh sharing his uh, life, his how his story of starting in the box, things like that. And we visited a lot of startups uh, ourselves. Taipei is very interesting. More and more startups are springing up, and they are bought over by the Chinese companies. Very interesting. Of course, not to forget fun, food, Taipei 101. And the graduation, of course, I must uh, sing a few songs for them. So what's the interesting, what, what do I do? What do I do? Some of you, uh, I see some of our interns here. What can you expect uh, live in the company? So we work with very interesting people. Um, people from everywhere. Go to lunches together religiously every day. We have uh, pretty girls too. And every day about 4 o'clock, 4.30, we have something called Fika. Which, would you like to explain what it means? <laughs> you guys have a nice time of day when you have a cup of coffee and some biscuits with your friends. You have a break. So when I told the interns that we have, we play cards every day, nobody believed. So this is what we do. Uh, we eat, we have fun, we have a break. And I brought my games, but nobody seems to play them. And during April school, we play pranks on each other, things like that. My workspace, we hang out after work, play basketball together, yes. And uh, even at Sentosa, we work hard, working on projects, even on the beach. So this is the life that you can expect. Of course, uh, attend AWS. I want to share two, th two things I'm working on right now. One, uh, I decided to join this because uh, we're working on something called an apprenticeship program. Now, there are many providers coming to teach program, just like the one I did uh, at General Assembly. And General Assembly is here in Singapore, right? Um, I feel that there could be a better way. And those of you from Europe and uh, other, other parts of the world may be more familiar with apprentice. Apprentice is where, you know, last time there was this, the, the carpenter to learn for the master, you must, you know, you must carry like Shaolin, you know? Must carry water every day without doing any kung, kung fu. So we have the same idea. We feel that yes, today with the internet, there's tons of material out there to learn. However, without help, you might be lost. We feel there's a better way. We feel that if you are properly guided, your learnings can can just accelerate. So we are working on a program where uh, we have interns or apprentices who are willing to come and work alongside our developers. And we believe that that's the best that anyone can learn and uh, improve their, their skills. And we have uh, libraries and things like that. Um, the second thing is something like, uh, it's a project uh, I'm working on. It's like an internal management, uh, knowledge management system. So for example, in your teams, right? You have junior developers, senior developers. How do you know who knows what? Right? Have you, have you faced that question before? Like it's like, okay, I try to solve a problem. You just go and ask around, hey, you know, how do you solve this? Or on Slack, or you search Google, you know. What if, what if, what if you know who can solve this problem? How about a team? How can you best match uh, the people in your teams together? to best serve the client if you're a service company or on a product. This gives visibility to, uh, to maybe the, the senior lead, how he can best move his uh, human resource. So in this tool we are building, we want to say, okay, you're, uh, everyone is a learner, right? Everybody learns every day. So when you learn something new, you can, you can, you can post it uh, into the app. But at the same time, you want to sort of rate yourself how well you're doing, you may have a senior attached to you and say, hey, you're doing well, or you're not doing well, you might like to look at this. What are the resources available for you to learn? Of course, you have Google, but sometimes it's easier if you can just sit down with someone to know someone who can solve the problem directly and explain the code to you. And why is better? Stack Overflow can help you solve the code, but it doesn't tell you about design. Why is it designed this way? And that's where experience comes in. We believe that building this app may help solve some of the problems we are facing. 
uh, to continue to learn, of course, uh, who remembers Justin from the US? Yes. So he was sharing with us uh, the last time about his notebook. So to continue to learn, yes, you come to Ruby meetups like this, and of course the conferences. So what's the moral of my story, of, of my life story? There, there are two things I want to share with you. First, I believe that changing a career or a job is it's not that difficult. Some of you who are lawyers before, or artists before, or cook before, you want to learn programming. It sounds daunting because every time something breaks, you know, your, your mom's computer breaks, you, you get the help, but you can't solve the problem. Right? You do not know what partition is. You do not know what file system is. What is the terminal? Okay? For me, learning something new takes a lot of courage. But really, just, just take that step. Just like Nike says, just do it. And you find that, especially in today, uh, you have meetups like this, you can find a lot of like-minded people. And you can reconnect with people. And I think that's the best way to learn. So do not be afraid. Go do what you want to do. The second thing is, uh, it's not that scary. The second thing is, I believe that anyone can learn anything. And that's, that's from the bottom of my heart. As a teacher, as a learner too. At my age, midlife, 40 plus years old, 15, a bit, I learn a bit slower, but if you put your heart and mind to it, you can learn. What's important is you, like, you find like-minded people like yourself, all of you and most importantly find a safe open supportive environment where you can learn together people who pushes you sometimes you know you know you have the capability but you just uh, you know and sometimes you're not guided you do not know what to do but I think given a chance all of you can be excellent developers or anything if you want to be a cook be an apprentice Go and learn from the master, Ramsey Gordon, or Gordon Ramsey, right? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> right? You want to be a, you want to be a Uber driver? Go drive for Uber. Right? It is a step, and I think that I'm addressing a room of developers. You know, your life may not be about code. Your life may be. Like for me, I, I would want to learn proper cooking one day. You want to set up your own restaurant. You want to do your, a, a non-profit. You want to help save some children from, I don't know, diseases. If given a choice, if I've not chosen this path as a developer, I would want to go back to school and learn quantum physics. Because I think that this is the one science that unifies the science. And to find the one equation to solve everything in the universe is something very noble. To me. So I believe, don't stop learning, and when you come to my age, I'm sure your life will be as bliss as mine. Thank you. Thank you so much for those inspiring words. Guys, if you have any questions for any of our ah, speakers, yes. please. Um, does anyone have any announcements that they'd like to make before we all break?